Good evening and welcome to the Hawaii Virtual College Fair. We're delighted to have you with us this evening and thank you for joining. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping announcements. My name is Gwen and I'm going to be facilitating tonight's session for you. So just know that as an attendee, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You will be able to use this feature to ask questions of our presenters throughout the next 45 minutes. Please do ask your questions. They are here to help you and to provide you information and they are more than happy to answer your questions. So make sure you're using that um, throughout this session. If you have a question that is specific to one institution, make sure you try to note that in your question. Otherwise, if you would like just to have information from all of our schools, just ask a general question and they all will be happy to answer that for you. Also, just so you know, your camera and your microphone are both off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you either. This is just one of many different sessions um, that is taking place, so I hope that you'll check out other sessions. But also, this session is being recorded along with all other sessions. So perhaps if there were other sessions you were not able to sit in on, you will be able to access those recordings, and they should all be available within about a week, and those can be accessed at the website where you registered for this particular program. So with that being said, I would like to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter, who is Chaminade University of Honolulu. Hi everyone, my name is Dior. I'm the Senior Admission Counselor at Chaminade University of Honolulu, and I'm here today to talk to you about opportunities that we have here at Chaminade. Our university is on a 65-acre hillside called Kalai Pohaku. We are located in the Kaimuki area, and our university faces Wailai Avenue. The neighborhood of Kaimuki is small and close-knit, and there's a ton of local coffee shops and restaurants that you can really immerse yourself in the Keeping It Kaimuki culture. When I'm wanting to adventure off campus, I always find myself at Hale Vietnam on a rainy or cold day. The atmosphere of Hale Vietnam is very similar to our campus. Small, family oriented, and a ton of different people coming from all over um, the world. This is gonna be the overview of our Kalai Pohaku campus. We share a campus with our little brothers from St. Louis schools, but all the buildings that you see in color are going to be Chaminade buildings. Our campus is traditional with all classes and events being centralized. Um, from the bottom of the hill, so number four right here on the screen, that is Trenton Hall. That's where our Silver Sword Cafe is located. And then all the way up to number 22, that is Kiefer Hall. That is where our Carlson Fitness Center is and our School of Fitness, Business. The walk between Trenton and Kiefer is less than 10 minutes, so it's really easy to navigate our campus. We have three residential halls located on campus and one off campus less than a mile away. It's not required for any of our students to live in our residential halls, but it's not uncommon for any of our local students on Oahu to live in our residential halls, especially if you're not wanting to commute in traffic. At Chaminade, we have 23 majors and we don't require our students to declare or lock in that major until the ending of their second year. As a Catholic and Marianist institution, as well as a native Hawaiian serving institution, it's our responsibility to provide as many hands-on learning experiences as possible, along with mentorship opportunities. With our small class sizes of about 18 students, which have decreased since COVID, it's given students more of an opportunity to get that one-on-one -on -one connection. With our 11 to, one, 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, it's really easy to get to know your professors. All of our professors are well known within their field and still very active. So networking after graduation is really easy for our students. There is a ton of different majors as you can see on the screen and some that are really popular and unique to us are going to be our forensic sciences program and our environmental and interior design. We have a direct entry for your nursing program and some of our newest majors is gonna be our community and public health, chemistry, data science, analytics, and visualization, and our environmental science program. When our professors are educating you inside the classroom, we have a ton of opportunities for you to dive in um, outside of the classroom. 
Through our Office of Student Activities and Leadership, there are over 30 clubs and organizations you can participate in. With cultural clubs or academic clubs, even just adventurous clubs, it's easy for our students to get really involved. Last year, our adventure club took our students zip lining and our cultural clubs put on a showcase each semester um, to celebrate the diversity that we have here on campus. We are NCAA Division II PacWest Conference for Athletics and our campus ministry has a wide variety of different learning and volunteer opportunities that you can dive into. Some of our students do take advantage of our study abroad opportunities and what's awesome is they're still able to graduate in four years through our four-year guarantee. This is a promise to you that we have um, as Chaminade students. As long as you do well in your classes and meet with your faculty advisor, we guarantee that you'll graduate within four years. For whatever reason, if that doesn't happen, Chaminade will pay that remaining balance for you. We know how important completing your degree is and we wanna make sure it's done in a timely manner, not only for you, but your family as well. And speaking of affordability, we have amazing scholarship and financial aid opportunities. We are committed to making college affordable for all students. With our tuition ranging from 26 to 32,000, we want you to know that none of our students pay that cost. With the average amount of scholarships and grants receiving is about 17,000, and our merit-based scholarships are automatically awarded upon acceptance. So there's no additional application for that. We do have Catholic and Native Hawaiian scholarships that you can apply for as well. And when looking at the admission requirements for Chaminade, please know that we have gone test blind. Last spring, we implemented a test optional approach um, in light of COVID, and that was to further support our students. We re-reviewed those policies and went test blind for the upcoming 2020 to 2021 academic year for all admissions, so general and the School of Nursing. And lastly, if you would like to continue this conversation and stay connected with us, please do so. You can do that by either scheduling a talk story session with one of our current students or faculty members. Join us virtually for Silver Sword Preview Week from November 2nd to November 6th and come visit us. We are here on campus and we're ready to welcome guests back and visitors. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for your time. And if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. My contact information is right there and I'm more than happy to walk you through um, your college search process. Aloha. Great, thank you so much. Next up, we're gonna hear from uh, Hawaii Pacific University. Aloha mai kako. Uh, my name is Brandon Bolseco. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Hawaii Pacific University, and I look forward to sharing all the benefits of staying local for college here at our great university. And we're going to kick it off with a great little video that will provide an overview of our university. <music> Now that you see how attractive of an option HPU is for you here locally, let's go ahead and talk about our academic programs and our admission requirements. 
So here at HPU, we have all of these undergraduate programs listed here on the screen uh, in yellow, and the concentrations within those programs are in white. Uh, they are separated out into five different colleges. And the great thing about all of our programs, the one thing they share in common is that they're all taught by faculty members. So you will never have a graduate assistant or a teaching assistant in the classroom. And here are two programs that I love to highlight for all of our incoming students, and that is our residential honors and our scholars program. Um, these two programs are built for those who are academically motivated. Maybe you've taken honors, IP, IB or AP credit in high school. These will be programs for you. Um, these both require a separate application from the regular application for admission, and the priority deadline is on December 1st. You can learn more at hpu.edu slash honors and hpu.edu slash scholars. And here are some scholarships that we offer for all of our students here at HPU. The first being academic merit of which you're automatically considered upon admission. Uh, and it is based off of your cumulative grade point average. We also offer various talent based scholarships. Back in high school, my hidden talent was singing. And no, we're not going to have a free concert right now. But if you have any hidden talents, be sure to let us know. We'd love to be able to award you additional scholarship money uh, for those talents. And all of our scholarships are stackable. You can learn more at hpu.edu slash talent. And the talent scholarships on the screen do require a separate application. And here are our admission requirements. What do you have to do to apply to HPU? Well, the first is an application at hpu.edu slash apply. Uh, we have an application on our website and we are also a member of the common application. So you can submit through their portal as well. We do require that students submit a $45 application fee and we do require your transcripts, uh, whether that be high school transcripts or if you've done any early college credit, um, IB or AP, you'll want to submit those documents as well so we can review them. The latter three items are optional. Uh, we are test optional. We no longer require students to submit the ACT or SAT test score. And we don't require students to submit a personal statement or a recommendation letter. However, those latter two documents are highly recommended to be submitted as, as that allows us to get to know you better as a person uh, as we operate utilizing a holistic approach. And speaking of tuition and fees, um, our tuition and fees for this year is $28,800. Room and board ranges from $14,000 to $20,000. Uh, we don't require that our students live on campus, especially you local students. But if you would like to, whether you're from the neighbor islands or on Oahu and want that full college experience, you can do so. Also, we have an innovative uh, program for our local students called the Hold'em Will Commitment. And that's HPU's commitment to meeting 100% of unmet tuition need for all students from Hawaii first year students. There's no separate application process and all you'll need to do is to complete the free application for federal student aid, uh, graduate from a Hawaii high school and attend in the fall 2021. And here's uh, some dates you'll want to keep in mind, including our November 15th early action deadline. You can hear back as early as uh, December 15th if you submit by that deadline. And also here's the contact information for both myself and my colleague, Allison Augustine. Uh, we both work with local students from Hawaii by last name. You can reach out to us. We're more than happy to help. Also like to invite you to one of our virtual information sessions happening on October 22nd at 7 p.m. You can register at hpu.edu slash Hawaii info. Mahalo and thank you for allowing me to speak today um, and hope you enjoyed it. All right. Oh. Great, thank you so much. Just a reminder for our attendees, the Q&A feature is live, so be sure that you are asking your questions. Next up, we have Hawaii Tokai International College. Daryl, unmute your mic. Aloha, everyone. My name is Daryl Kicker. I'm the Director of Admissions at Hawaii Tokai International College in Kapolei. 
and I wanted to share a little bit of information about our college. We are a two-year college, so it's just a place to start out your college experience uh, before transferring to a four-year college to earn your bachelor's degree. We really think we may be one of the most unique colleges in the state of Hawaii, and I wanted to show you a few reasons why that is. Our very small size, our small classes, and personalized attention. Uh, we have an incredible intercultural learning environment. We have many international students on our campus. Uh, we give you the opportunity to study abroad in Japan or Korea or China. Uh, we also teach Japanese, Korean, and Chinese. Uh, you can choose an academic track and earn your AA degree in only 15 months. Uh, and then, of course, our location here in Hawaii and on-campus housing, which I'll talk about in a little bit. We're a super small college. Our total enrollment right now is about 125 students. We plan to grow to an average enrollment of 250. So even if we get as big as we're planning on getting, we're gonna be a very small college and that's by design. Um, our average class size is typically, the largest class is typically 18 students. The average class size is probably closer to 11 or 12 students. Um, and at a small school like Hawaii Tokai, you'll get to know your classmates and your teachers and they're gonna to get to know you you'll receive a lot of support, which will help you succeed as a college student. You may know that Tokai is a Japanese word. We're affiliated with the Tokai University System in Japan. Uh, we are Hawaii Tokai International College, an American college, but the majority of our students come from Japan, followed by students from the US. Um, other nationalities this year have included China, Korea, India, Russia, um, and we're hoping to diversify even more. We're always trying to recruit from around the world. You really have a chance to increase your worldview, to expand your horizons, to see things in new ways, and to become a global citizen. Um, study abroad opportunities. You have the chance to study abroad in Japan, or in Korea, or in China. And let me just show you the locations. Our partner school in Japan is Tokai University. Uh, the main campus is called the Shonan Campus, and it's located in Kanagawa Prefecture, which you can see on the map there, is just southwest of Tokyo and Yokohama. Our partner school in Korea is Hanyang University. It's right in Seoul, right in the capital city of Seoul. You can see there on the map. And then our partner in China is called Shenzhen University. Um, it's located in the southeast part of China there on the map in Guangdong province, um, close to Guangzhou city and close to Hong Kong, as you can see on the, on the map there. So um, you can complete your first two years of college at Hawaii Tokai in only 15 months. We're on a quarter system here. Uh, each quarter is about 10 weeks uh, or we round up to three months per quarter. Um, and it only takes five quarters as a full-time student to earn your AA degree. Uh, so you can start in the fall and at the end of the next fall, 15 months later, you'll be graduating with an AA degree. You can choose various academic tracks. The degree is called liberal arts. You're taking your general education classes at Hawaii Tokai, but you can choose the peace studies as an academic track, hospitality and tourism, East Asian studies or business. And of course, we're located here in beautiful Hawaii. You guys are from Hawaii, so you know all about that. Uh, we're in Kapolei, which is on the west side of Oahu, uh, Oahu's second city. And um, we do have on-campus housing available. So we have a dormitory right here on campus, which is not that common for a two-year school. So you can commute if you're coming to school on, from uh, on Oahu, but you can also live on campus if you would just prefer to have that experience of living on campus and living independently. And of course, if you're from far away on Oahu or from a neighbor island, uh, living on campus is always um, um, a great choice. It's not required uh, for US citizens, but um, it's an option that you'll have. Okay, and here's a bonus, scholarships. We offer two types of merit scholarships here. The Gateway Scholarship is for US high school students. So if you graduate from high school with a GPA of 3.0 or above, you're guaranteed a first term scholarship of $1,000. If you have a 3.5 or above, your scholarship will be $1,800 your first term. That's 50% of your tuition. Uh, and then once you're a Hawaii Tokai student, you can earn scholarships for up, up to 50%, up to $1,800. Uh, by keeping a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or above. This is our tuition schedule. Tuition here is 4,250 per term, per quarter, but all US students get an automatic $650 scholarship, which brings your tuition down to $3,600. And then we have fees every term. And if you wanna live on campus, those are the housing costs. And we can always give you more information about that as well. 
Uh, this is just some photos of the campus. This is our sort of our main classroom and administrative building. You can see the um, overhead view of our campus. We're right next door to UH West Oahu, if you know where that is, in Kapolei. So that's our, our neighbor campus. Our dormitory students actually eat their meals in the cafeteria at UH West Oahu. So uh, that's what I have to share with you today. Uh, you can find out more at our website. You can email us at admissions at tokai.edu or my direct email is there, dkicker at tokai.edu. We have an online application. Uh, just go there and uh, you can apply online and submit that. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook. Uh, ask us questions in the Q&A. Uh, it's a great place to start out. You can get your AA degree and then you can transfer to a four-year school like HPU or Chaminade or Concordia or Arizona State and then be on your way to earn your bachelor's degree. So thank you very much. I look forward to sharing more information with you guys. Great, thank you so much. Next, we're gonna hear from uh, Capulani Community College. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. On behalf of Alfie and myself, we're so excited to be here with you all this afternoon. And my name is Sheldon. Again, Alfie, we're from Kapi'o Atlanta Community College. And please, if you have questions, just throw it in the Q&A. We'll be happy to answer them as we go through this presentation. On the screen, you'll see our contact information. You're almost, you're, you are more than welcome to contact us should you have any questions outside of this presentation. You can view our website on, those, on the information that you see below. Um, but once again, thank you for allowing us to share the wonderful things that Kapi'o Atlantic Community College has to offer. Important thing to remember is that we, there are seven community colleges in the University of Hawaii system, um, but we are all one big family. So it's important to know that on the big island in Kona and Hilo, that is Hawaii Community College. On the island of Maui, you have University of Hawaii Maui College, and I need to put a shout out for Molokai Education Center. So they're a part of the University of Hawaii Maui College. They just have a satellite center on the island of Molokai. On the island of Oahu, you have Honolulu Community College, which is near the Ivalei Costco, near downtown. You have Leeward Community College, which is in Waipio, and you have Windward Community College, which is in Kaneohe. And on the island of Kauai, you have Kauai Community College. And here on the slopes of Diamond Head, back on the island of Oahu, you have Kapi'o Alani Community College. One of the wonderful things about Kapi'o Alani Community College, we have a lot of options for like all students, even if they're just exploring. So a couple of things to remember. We have non-select programs and select programs. On the non-select program, what that means is that let's say you want to declare natural science as your degree, you can start taking courses towards that degree from day one. So when you apply to Kapi'o Alani, you put natural science, you will be a declared natural science uh, degree seeking student. The select program's a little bit different. These are our competitive programs. So these are our health programs and new media arts. You need to finish a certain prerequisite classes first before getting into those programs. Students in those cases, they will apply as liberal arts, complete their prerequisites, and then later apply to these select programs. So very important to remember. If you're looking for short-term programs to get you out into the workforce quickly, we have our very viable non-credit programs. These are roughly maybe three months to maybe six months, could be even a year, but these degrees or these short-term certificates put you directly into the workforce. For some of you, maybe this could be like a summer thing, like maybe before you move off to the mainland, say you go out to the continent, you may wanna consider getting some of these short-term short certificates. So when you move up to the continent, perhaps you could work in a pharmacy or you could work at a, um, like a physician's office. You'll have a better uh, part-time job, say working, say a retail job or whatnot. So this is a great opportunity to up your skills. So again, should you move to the continent or should you need to work immediately, you might want to consider these non-credit programs. Transferring is also another wonderful opportunity our students uh, take full advantage of. We're, we're an accredited institution. Our credits will go places. So as you see on the screen, our students have not only gone to colleges locally, but students have gone to colleges that you see on the screen there. And so if you're thinking about saving money and want to finish your first two years of college with us or your freshman and sophomore classes with us, you can take courses with us, 
work with our advisors and counselors to figure out what your next steps will be if it's with our local colleges or beyond. If you look on the other side, it gives you some statistics on where our students have gone within the UH system, and it shows you the amount of credits they have transferred with. So some of our students will stay for maybe about a semester or two. Some will spend maybe four semesters with us, whatever works for them. And so as you can see, a lot of our students will transfer to the, to the other institutions with a lot of credits. Here are some cost benefits. So we are the best deal in town. For about a year, you'd be spending about $3,300 $3, per year. And with financial aid, that all could be free. You're also gonna be exposed to high quality instructors, research opportunities, everything that you see there. And our class sizes do not go bigger than 35. Our math and writing classes do not go bigger than 22. This goes for our online classes as well. Um, just some information to get you started. The whole process is free from application. The only time you really need to submit any kind of payment is when you register for classes. So the whole journey to getting started with Kapi'olani, there is no cost. And we just want to thank you again for this opportunity. If you have any questions, you can email us, you can visit us on our website, and we really hope to see you folks on our campus real soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so just a reminder, we have um, two more um, college or universities to present. So attendees, just make sure that you get your questions um, out there if you would like to get those answered. Next up, we're going to hear from Arizona State University. All right, good evening. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Uh, here from Tempe, Arizona. My name is Brad Barch. I'm the Senior Director of Admissions here at ASU. Happy to answer any questions that you may have about the university. I know we're at kind of a short time here, but if you snap a photo of this, I'll be happy to get connected uh, with you and answer all of your individual questions there. So just want to start briefly about the university, what goes on here. Um, we are the largest public university in the US and we want to be measured by who we include, not by who we exclude in our student population. And so when it comes to the admissions process, um, it's, it's non-competitive. So if students meet the requirements, they'll be admitted to the university. And so when you step foot on one of our four campuses, you'll be a part of one of the most socioeconomic diverse student populations in the country. Um, the other things that are important to know is we are one of the top universities and just this past year we're listed as the number four public university for undergraduate education and the number four public university for first year experience. And so what you will experience here, a part of this campus that is dynamic and flexible, and it's not based in tradition, it's about looking forward to make sure that when you graduate, you are going to be a successful member of society and being able you know, to be right now on the verge of a major technology revolution and being able to be a, a universal learner and keep learning throughout your lifespan. Um, when you talk about our campus, like I mentioned before, um, over 75,000 students from all 50 states. We have about 500 currently enrolled students from Hawaii, and it's easy to get to and from any of the islands here. Um, we even have a special scholarship students for native Hawaiian students. So again, you come to campus, you will meet people from not only the United States, but it's a global community as well. Um, I did mention that we're spread across four campus locations here. Um, when you apply for admission, your degree program typically determines the campus that you're going to be at. And so the Phoenix metropolitan area is the fifth largest metro in the city. It's also the 11th largest metropolitan area in North America. Uh, each of these four campuses has a theme or an identity. Um, so again, you get to find what is the best place for you. And again, leverage your place here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. All right, so I mentioned the campuses, they each have their theme or identity. Um, I'm gonna start with the West Campus, which is a small liberal arts experience. Um, it's kind of the antithesis to what, what we think about ASU. The Polytechnic Campus is home to all of our STEM related degree programs. So if you're the type of student that likes to take things apart and put it back together again, this could be the campus for you. The Downtown Phoenix Campus is based in public policy journalism. You're going to do a career in government. This is going to be the campus for you. And then the Tempe campus is that traditional mindset. 
all campuses are ASU together. You're a Sun Devil no matter which one you go to. When you apply for admission, you're admitted to the university. So if you wanted to change majors between any of the campuses, you can do that. Let's say you're at the downtown Phoenix campus studying journalism and you want to do a unique course that's offered at the Tempe campus. You just build that into your schedule. So again, it's really about everything that's possible here and being able to customize your experience. One of the things that I'll acknowledge is ASU is big and it's a complex um, place to be a part of. And so we designed all of these tools available to you to be able to navigate that. Um, so the campus fit quiz will go through kind of what you're interested in in terms of your student experience and the type of campus that you want and help guide you to what might be the best place for you. Um, the Me 3 quiz really helps you hone in on degree and career interests by swiping through a series of uh, images and it'll land on your career. And then degree search is really about the outlines of the classes that you're going to take and how you're going to be successful in them. So again, the ASU, we develop the tools to make sure that you're going to be successful here. Um, I did see one of the questions that popped up about Barrett, the Honors College. So thanks for asking that. Um, Barrett is across all four campuses. And so when you look at the student experience here at the university, I mentioned it's about customizing your, ex um, your experience. There's well over thousand clubs and organizations to participate in. And so Barrett is just one of the ways that you can enhance your academic experience. Um, and with Barrett, it's a selective community of scholars, all degree programs. It does have a supplemental application that requires letters of recommendation and personal statements. Barrett is known as the gold standard of honors programs in the country. And I'll show you a way to get connected um, with them shortly here. I do want to mention about our live hosted programming. We offer it Monday through Friday and, you know, expanding your six minutes with me here. Um, take a look at visit.asu.edu where Barrett, the Honors College, will have information sessions. All of our degree programs, whether it's professional flight, journalism, life sciences, there's a variety of different ways to get connected to ASU and learn a lot about what's happening here. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is what's called More to Explore. Uh, More to Explore is a week um, coming up here where we offer a variety of different master level classes. So you as a student can take a hour class with sustainability where they're talking about the impact of COVID and food security or insecurity. Um, the journalism school is going to talk about brand management across uh, all of your different social media platforms. So I really encourage you to take an advantage or take advantage of the more to explore week that we've designed and you can learn a lot about ASU without ever stepping foot on campus. So again, go to visit.asu.edu. You'll find all of the sites um, that I talked about. Um, and then when I want to wrap up here is with our admission and merit based scholarships. And so for admission we are test optional, so you do not need that to be admitted. And then as far as merit scholarships go, you just need to apply for admission and you will be automatically considered. So with that, I see that my time is up and thank you for joining us. Great, thank you so much. So um, some great questions in the Q&A, so um, keep those coming. Our final presenter tonight will be from Concordia University, Irvine. Hi all, thank you so much for uh, letting me present. I'm uh, really disappointed that I didn't get to get to the islands and meet all of you in person, but uh, I, my name is Adam. I am the Assist Associate Director of Admissions here at Concordia Irvine, and I work with all of our incoming students from Hawaii. Um, so Concordia University Irvine is a private uh, Christian school in sunny Southern California and Irvine, much like uh, our partner schools here, HPU and Shamanan, just located in Southern California. Um, we're about 1,500 undergraduate students, so it's on the smaller size. You get known as a student, an individual. People really invest into you and want to help see you succeed. We know Concordia isn't the end-all, be-all, and so we want to help figure out what you want to do after college, um, get you to apply to those graduate schools you want to get to, get you internships, get you the job placement that you um, are set wanting to do. So um, beautiful campus. As you can see it behind me, this is our campus where we have uh, housing facilities, science labs, um, our, our sports, you know, equipments and then all of our student union and everything as well. Um, top five majors are uh, business, biology, psychology, liberal studies for teaching and kinesiology. And so uh, study movement, if you want to get into teaching, it's a great place to do it in California because you can take your teaching credential in California pretty much anywhere across the nation. It is, uh, you know, one of the top um, places to get a teaching credential is here in California. I'm going to fly through a lot of these things. Enduring questions idea is our version of core curriculum. We want to change up 
what you do in your general ed um, and, and create critical thinkers, not people that are just repeating the things that they've learned the last 12 years, um, but uh, pairing classes together. What does math have to do with philosophy, biology with theology, um, and history with literature? Uh, we're going to teach you how to think, not just what to think. Um, study abroad opportunities, one of our most popular things on campus, and unfortunately, it ain't going to happen this year. The next year it is planned, it would be in 2022, which you guys would be more than welcome to take part on, is our around the world semester. You visit 10 to 11 different countries in a semester with a couple of classmates and a couple of staff members, complete 18 units in really unique places like in the Sahara Desert or on a boat in um, Thailand, and uh, by the end of that, you earn a, a a minor in global cultural studies and, in, and it doesn't set you behind in your studies at all. You are going to graduate in four years. We're going to make sure that that happens. Um, chapels are offered, but they're not required. So it's more than what you're more than welcome to attend it. Um, campus life. We have a, we're part of the NCAA division two in the PAC West and uh, there are scholarship opportunities available there as well as through some of our co-curricular curriculars, music, theater, and forensics, which is, uh, you know, speech and debate. We have a brand new music building on campus that just opened up last year, a $35 million building that has awesome brand new uh, recording equipment, uh, you know, labs and places for you to take care and, and store your instruments um, and just a, a lot of opportunities there. So if you're interested in that, check out our website um, and see different scholarship opportunities through music and theater as well as speech and debate. Application. We have two different ways that you can apply and uh, one is through the Common App. So if you're going to be applying to other different colleges and universities um, that are part of the Common App, feel free to do it that way. We'd love to see it come that way or go through our website, cui.edu. Um, it is a free application so that you don't have to worry about uh, any other costs. So it doesn't hurt to submit that. We are test optional for fall of 2021. We know it's a hard time to take those tests. So don't worry, you're still going to be awarded the best academic scholarship possible, which I'll go to in just a minute. And I can even get you admitted off of unofficial transcripts. So literally take a screenshot, take, download a PDF from your student portal, email it to me, and I will get you an admissions decision with just your application and those transcripts. Um, that's all it takes. So it's about an eight minute application and then unofficial transcripts. Um, I personally review all the applications. So let me know if you have questions or concerns. We have started accepting applications, and admitting students now. And so I saw a question about when you'll find out. Um, if you apply on Monday, I can probably let you know uh, by the, or apply this weekend and give me your transcripts. I'll probably let you know by the end of the week. Um, it's a quick turnaround. Part of that application will letting you know what uh, scholarship you qualify for. So 100% of students at Concordia receive financial aid of some sort, grants or scholarships, not just the student loans, but grants or scholarships, free money, 100% uh, of students. There are additional scholarships mentioned. Um, but uh, yeah, scholarships a lot range between ten to nineteen thousand dollars per year. Unless you apply for our honors program, we do have an additional honors program. Ryan, I see you asking questions about honors program, so that's for you. Uh, Cui.edu/honors um, and uh, presidential honor scholarship is very competitive, but covers full tuition. Uh, honor scholarship covers up to twenty-six thousand um, dollars. So. Great ways there are if you're interested in transferring in from one of the other great universities on the call tonight, college tonight, um, there are transfer scholarships as well. Um, come check us out online, cui.edu. Uh, lots of great things. We have a brand new virtual tour, student-led virtual tour that you can check out by one of my student workers in the office. Uh, his name is Michael. He did an amazing job touring you around campus, showing you some of his favorite things. Um, our location in Irvine, if you're not familiar with it, uh, we're about 10 minutes from Newport Huntington Beach, 20 minutes from Disneyland, 40 minutes from Los Angeles. Uh, I think Orange County is one of the best places in the entire world and uh, it's, it's a great place for you to come check out, call home. I'd love to see you visit campus either in person, we, could ha we can host you here on campus or virtually a lot of great events. Uh, next week we're doing some events where you can meet professors from different camp uh, programs and departments. So check out everything that we have available. Would love to answer, love to meet you uh, virtually or over the phone or via email. I'm here to help. Uh, once again, my name is Adam. Thank you so much for your time, you guys. And I hope to see your application come across my desk soon. Great, thank you so much. Um, so that concludes our presentations um, for the evening. Um, however, we have a few minutes left. So um, I wanted to just take 
an opportunity um, for each of our presenters to give a final thought um, before we finish here. Also for them to be able to answer any last minute questions that are still in the Q&A. Um, so if each of you would um, maybe just 30, 45 seconds, uh, talk about a favorite school tradition that your institution has, um, or perhaps something that you feel is unique about your school kind of as a final thought. Um, and before you answer the question, perhaps state the name of your school again, just so our attendees remember where you are from. So we'll go in the same order um, in which you presented. So Shamanad University of Honolulu, why don't you start us off? All right, thank you so much. Um, again, my name is Dior. I'm the senior admission counselor here at Shamanad University of Honolulu. And the question I'll answer is going to be, what is our favorite tradition or my favorite tradition? Um, I graduated from Shamanad, so I am an alumna. And there are so many different traditions that we have here on campus. And one that I'm going to talk about is our Pacific Island Review and International Extravaganza. So it's a showcase that our cultural clubs do. And I like to say it's just a luau style. Um, but what's really unique about that is we do it each year and the entire campus community comes together. So faculty, staff, students, and our president, Dr. Lynn Babington, all come out for a night to support our cultural clubs. And that's really when you see our entire campus community come together. And that really defines the family spirit that we have here on campus. Um, you never see an unfamiliar face. Everyone knows everybody. And if you're looking for that type of college experience or, you know, just that, you know, second home away from home, that's what you can find here at Shamanad. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha, um, Hawaii my name Pacific. is Brandon. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Hawaii Pacific University. Uh, and one of our traditions that we hold every year is our intercultural day and our club carnival, which is a great way for students to not only realize all the opportunities they have to get involved on campus, but also it celebrates our cultural diversity as being uh, the most diverse private university in the entire United States. And I think at that event, uh, you really realize that you're a part of one big ohana here on campus at HPU. Um, and so I think that's a really great opportunity and really showcases uh, who we are um, as a campus community. Hawaii Tokai. Hi, I'm Daryl from Hawaii Tokai. I really think one of the most unique things about our college is just your chance to get to know people from um, other parts of the world and uh, really expand your worldview, um, especially for students interested in studying abroad, for students interested in East Asia, Japan, Korea, China in particular. Uh, you'll have real opportunities to study the language. Our faculty is very internationally minded. And um, yeah, we talk about global citizenship here, and I really think you have a chance to become a global citizen here at Hawaii Tokai University. So uh, take a chance, enjoy the adventure. Thanks. Hi, this is Sheldon from Kapi'olani Community yeah. College. Yep. Uh, what I love about our college is the amount of support students will receive from our instructors to the 35 plus counselors that we have on campus to tutoring. Um, we just have, like everyone is sharing, we have one, we treat everyone in like one big ohana. So when you're on our campus, we try our very best to take really good care uh, to each and every one of our students. And that's why I just love working at our campus. All right, I would recommend, you know, it's, we're a big university. <laughs> There's so many ways that you're able to customize your experience here at ASU. And every student will have a unique Sun Devil journey. So when it comes to spirit, tradition, and pride, it's all about ASU and the town that we're a part of. Um, but at the same time, it's this forward fake forward focused education experience that is bending towards what is happening in the world now. And so that's really exciting. Perfect. Yeah, and I'll wrap it up here. Um, we are a small university. And so I think one of my favorite things is the relationships you build across campus. And I'm going to talk about like three uh, student life things that everyone loves to do across campus. I changed my background if you can't tell. This right here is French Hill. It is right behind our campus. You can walk to the top of French Hill um, and see the beach from there. But one of the best things to do is to turn around, uh, face away from the beach and face Disneyland and watch the fireworks go off every single night when that happens. So uh, students love doing that, hiking up the hill. You're gonna be out of breath by the time you get up there, but it's really, really good. Um, and then suitcase bingo uh, is one of the things that happens every single year. 
uh, students pack up a suitcase, go play bingo. Grand prize at the end of the, the suitcase bingo is you and a friend, if you win, get whisked away to a weekend getaway somewhere in Southern California. Um, you know, all expenses covered and everything like that. Just, just for fun, just a fun little student life thing that happens every single year. All right. Thank you so much for that. So we have uh, come to the end of our time. Um, and so to be respectful of uh, everyone's time, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, but I just wanna give a thank you to each of our presenters for being here this evening. A thank you uh, to our attendees for joining us as well. Um, just so you know, when you close out of this window, there will be a link to a quick four question survey. Uh, we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide um, to help make these sessions better. Also, just as a reminder, this is one of many different sessions that are taking place. You can certainly sign up for additional ones. Um, and you can also access a recording of this session and all other sessions that are taking place um, at the website where you registered for the program. So again, I'd like to thank each of our presenters for being here. Thank you to our attendees and uh, have a good rest of the day or night, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you so much.